Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here this morning. I'm Grant Hunter, and I'm the MLA for Tabor Warner and the Parliamentary Secretary for Agri-Food Development. And I was privileged to be Alberta's first um, red tape reduction minister. I will be emceeing this morning. As an entrepreneur for most of my life, I have had deep passion and understanding for the plight of the small business owners. And when I was thinking about the idea of, of a red tape reduction initiative in Alberta, I approached uh, Jason Kenney, who wasn't the Premier at the time, and I told him, you know what, you talk often about the importance of having Alberta be the place to the most the best place to raise a family st start a business and I said in order to be able to do that you have to have some kind of a red tape reduction initiative and so uh, we had the I had the opportunity of being able to talk with Laura Jones with the Canadian Federation of Independent Business and she helped uh, helped us craft this very important initiative and so um, in 2019, when I was tasked with setting up Alberta's red tape reduction strategy, I was excited to get started removing barriers for our job creators and Albertans. And that's why we're here today, to talk about a promise made and a promise kept. We'll start off by watching a video, a short video, highlighting some of the government's red tape accomplishments, followed by a few words from my friend Dale Nally, Service Alberta Minister and Red Tape Reduction Minister. Then we will hear from a few distinguished guests, speakers, and then there will be some uh, time for media questions, which will be moderated by Press Secretary Nikki Gokuan. Let's begin. I'll direct your attention to the screen for a short video. We did it. Today we are celebrating a milestone four years in the making. We've officially reduced government red tape in Alberta by 33% to make life easier for Albertans and businesses. It put a smile on my face every day knowing that we got government out of the way of hardworking Albertans. We've changed how we do registry services. Now, Albertans can decide if they want to go to the registry in person or access certain services online. We work with First Nations leaders to eliminate the Alberta Indian Tax Exemption Card in favor of the Federal Status Card, aligning Alberta with practices in other provinces. We now provide financial support to nonprofits and social service providers in multi-year cycles, which helps them focus on delivering high quality services and spend less time applying for funding. Updates to the International Qualification Assessment Service makes it easier and faster for new Canadians to receive credit for international certifications, helping qualified people secure jobs much faster. We simplified approval processes in Alberta's industrial heartland to attract new investment, to create jobs and maintain Alberta's position as a leader in sustainable energy and petrochemical development. Since 2019, we've cut more than 200,000 pieces of red tape. We've reached our goal of reducing it by one third, but the hard work continues. We're still looking for opportunities to cut red tape. If you have an idea, share it with us at alberta.ca forward slash cut red tape. Let's continue making Alberta the most efficient government in Canada. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, MLA Hunter, for that introduction. And thank you for whoever shot that video, the creativity behind that. Uh, I, I want everyone to know that I, I really appreciated Emily Hunter being here because he, he started this. Now, now, what you don't know is back in 2019, after we won the election, but before we took office, uh, Premier-elect Kennedy at the time interviewed every MLA uh, in our caucus and, and asked them, how do you want to contribute to this new government? And you know, the number one ask 
of, uh, of caucus was the red tape reduction file. Um, that's how much we embrace uh, red tape reduction. And, and you got it, sir, and you did a great job and, and really kicked things off and, and got, us, uh, got us going to where we, uh, what led us here today. So thank you to everyone for, for coming. As you may know, each year the Canadian Federation of Independent Business typically celebrates the end of January as Red Tape Reduction Awareness Week and awards all Canadian jurisdictions with a grade in its red tape report card based on their efforts to reduce red tape. This year for Red Tape Awareness Week, the CFIB has chosen to focus on the importance of reducing red tape in the face of the rising cost of living and doing business. As the Minister responsible for red tape reduction, I can say that our red tape reduction efforts, especially in the last several years, have been strongly focused on saving Albertans and Alberta businesses time and money making our province a more affordable place to live and to do business. Since 2019, red tape reduction has been a major goal for the Alberta government, and we have made significant strides. We understand that complicated regulations, onerous paperwork, and bureaucratic redundancies cost Albertans valuable time and money, and that is time and money that doesn't need to be spent. We continue to make positive changes that directly benefit Albertans, and that has played a key role in Alberta's economic growth by supporting employment, expanding skills and training, and driving innovation and diversification. We have removed unnecessary barriers faced by job creators, enhancing Alberta's competitiveness and allowing our job creators to do what they do best. That is undertake new investment and increase employment opportunities in Alberta. In fact, by modernizing regulations and reducing administrative burden, we have saved Albertans and businesses $2.75 billion since 2019. That's $2.7 billion to invest in the success of Alberta's economy. Today, as we acknowledge the importance behind Red Tape Awareness Week, I am pleased to announce that we have reached our goal to cut red tape across government by one-third. We have been working diligently, engaging Albertans, and working closely with industry to identify opportunities to streamline rules and processes, as well as simplify regulations. We have implemented nearly 700 initiatives to reduce red tape since 2019. 41 of those were recommendations that came directly from the public, and 200 were directly from industry. About 80 initiatives, inspired by industry advice and feedback from Albertans, were implemented in 2023 alone, and there's another 40 that are currently underway. And since 2019, we've passed seven red tape reduction bills that have been uh, creating meaningful legislative changes, making life easier for Albertans. But you don't just have to take our word for it. The proof is in the grade. Since 2019, the CFIB has been recognizing our hard work and it's been reflected in our report card. Alberta has been a provincial leader in red tape reduction for the past three years, and last year we were ranked as number one among the provinces with an overall grade of A-. With another year of significant accomplishments under our belt, I look forward to the announcement of this year's grades later this week. It's not just the provincial government that's making progress, though. As we gather here in the heart of downtown St. Albert, I have to commend the City of St. Albert for its own red tape reductions. Initiatives like exploring regulatory changes to enable housing construction and uh, providing tools like interactive maps and data portals and issuing development permits in less than five days. And in case anyone didn't hear that, I'm just going to repeat it. That's development permits in under five days, and that's amazing. And these are just three examples of the way the City of St. Albert makes it easy for Albertans to work with the municipality. Though I'm sure there are excellent municipal regulations aren't the only reason the City of St. Albert is consistently ranked as Canada's top communities to live. Now, looking forward, even with our one-third red tape reduction achievement and hopeful for another respectable grade from CFIB, our job is far from finished. We've worked hard to make these changes and must continue our efforts to keep complicated processes and redundancies from, keeping, uh, from creeping back in. We will continue working with the public and industry to find new ways to simplify regulation and streamline processes wherever we can and to maintain the progress we've already made. Our goal in red tape reduction has always been to make life easier for Albertans and that's not something we will ever stop working on. 
I'd also like to take the opportunity to remind uh, everyone that, uh, that we're all partners in this endeavour. We were always open to feedback from Albertans. Uh, if you or someone you know has encountered a process or regulation that seems unnecessarily cumbersome, and, and if you have uh, ideas on how to make it easier, we want to hear from you. You can visit the Cutting Red Tape page on alberta.ca forward slash cut red tape. Providing feedback is as simple as sending an email. Thank you everyone for joining me here today to mark this important week and to celebrate our hard-earned milestone in cutting red tape. I look forward to continuing this momentum. Thank you. Emily Hunter. Thank you, Minister. And now we'll have uh, Sheena Hughes, the Deputy Mayor of St. Albert, make some, bring some brief remarks. Hi, everyone. I'm going to... I guess I'm shorter. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Sheena Hughes. I'm Deputy Mayor of the City of St. Albert. It is my honor on behalf of City Council to extend a warm welcome to everyone here who took the time to come today. I also just want to acknowledge my fellow City Councillors that are also very much committed to efficiencies, Councillor Mackay, Councillor Broadhead, Councillor McKillick, and Councillor Bermansky. Thank you guys for coming and showing your support for this actually very important initiative. I also want to begin by respectfully acknowledging that we're on Treaty 6 territory, traditional lands of the First Nations and Métis people. I'm very pleased to join the Government of Alberta to recognize this Red Tape Reduction Week in our province. Here in Alberta, our Council is equally committed to reducing red tape and unnecessary barriers that impede investment, development and progress in our community. As a Council, we are very committed to taking efficiency steps and maximizing our effectiveness. In St. Albert, we've taken deliberate steps to modernize and improve our procedures and processes. We have streamlined our operations to save our own organization, as well as our residents, businesses, and developers valuable time and money. We are pleased that both Premier Smith and Minister Nally have acknowledged our ongoing efforts and actually decided to do this press release and conference here today which has helped us to achieve expand, expedited timelines for processing permits. And I also want to just acknowledge our head of planning, Adrian, who is so committed to actually making sure that the city runs as efficiently as possible in his department. And much of what's been done is the efforts of you and your staff. Oh, I'm not, I've lost my place. <laughs> We've also wanted to acknowledge and recognize the Urban Design Institute, or UDI, an organization of regional land developers. In the city of DeGrowth, the UDI noted that our region does a good job of quickly approving development permits and looking at the 2022 data for all types of development permits, St. Albert was ranked in the top tier of municipality. As UDI notes in St. Albert, as it was stated, our development permits are processed on an average of 4.7 days. We've achieved this impressive turnaround time by the collaborative approach of the development industry to enable increased growth investment and commerce in our city, and the dedication of our staff to make sure that it happens. St. Albert has actively worked to reduce red tape since 2015 and even before that, as part of the council priority to support economic prosperity in our city. During that time, we've achieved several significant improvements. Working in partnership with the UDI, we recently introduced a two-tier approval process for area structure plans and neighborhood plans. This process is more efficient, requiring less staff time and reducing further approval times. We're also in the process of updating our land use bylaw and obtaining new permitting application software to further streamline and automate processes whenever it's possible. In addition, we provided online application renewal options that enables local businesses to receive their business license in two days or less. St. Albert is committed to regional collaboration and in working in partnership with the Government of Alberta, one such example is our shared work to twin Ray Gibbon Drive, which was an equal investment to make sure that this happens. And this critical economic corridor, which has contributed to significant investment in St. Albert's Anthony Henday Business Park. The business park has attracted the attention of Coldwell banker Richard Ellis, more commonly known as CBRE, one of the largest commercial real estate companies. CRB is highlighted with the Anthony Henday Business Park, or has highlighted the Anthony Henday Business Park, as one of the top six developments in Canada to watch for 2024. Furthermore, the Ray Gibbon Drive Economic Corridor has unlocked the potential for adjacent Lakeview Business District, a new 600-acre business park that will generate over 5,000 jobs once it's fully built out. 
Our investment-friendly environment has created a high demand for commercial space in St. Albert, and the economic benefits that Lakeview will bring to both our residents, the province, and all the businesses that contribute towards it will be a top priority. And that is why, and will be a, bring growth to the entire region. And that is why St. Albert's top council priority is to get shovels in the ground and make sure that this development actually happens as soon as possible. The St. Albert, City of St. Albert continues to be a strong supporter of the province's ongoing commitment to reduce red tape and their initiative to actually make sure that this happens and is not just talking it but taking that walk to make sure it happens on a daily basis is admirable. And we appreciate the opportunity to join them here today to share some of St. Albert's successes in this community. Thank you. Thank you, Sheena. And uh, before I introduce our next speaker, I do want to say that uh, after I was the Red Tape Production Minister, uh, Tanya Furr actually took over that role, and she did a fantastic job in being able to move that, that file forward. So with that, I want to bring forward uh, Shelley Nicole, the Executive Director from St. Albert Chamber of Commerce, to bring a few words. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm here representing the St. Albert District Chamber of Commerce and the stand-in for our current chair, Rosanna Fisher. So as a representative of the business community, we are honored to commend Minister Dale Nally, the Minister of Service Alberta and Red Tape Reduction for his transformative impact on our business landscape over the past year. One significant contribution since his inception was to the condominium industry. His unwavering commitment to streamlining processes, reducing bureaucracy, and enhancing regulatory frameworks has had a profound impact on the condominium licensing system, as well as his advocacy for extending critical condition dates with the Real Estate Council of Alberta. Minister Nally's multifaceted role in Service Alberta oversees key areas such as vital statistics, consumer protection, and of course, real estate, underscores his comprehensive approach to public service. His efforts in red tape reduction has significantly improved the efficiency of government services and created a more business-friendly environment. This, in turn, has positively influenced the business sector, allowing for smoother transactions and fostering a climate, a con a climate conducive to growth and development. As Minister Nally navigates the intricate landscapes of regulations, he does so with a keen understanding of the challenges faced by industry professionals and consumers alike. His initiatives in red tape reduction have not only simplified the processes, but also enhanced the overall experience for those involved in business. Furthermore, Mr. Nally's dedication to advocating for the extension of the condition dates showcases his commitment to ensuring fairness and flexibility in licensing. This is a testament to the government's vision for a dynamic and adaptable industry that caters to the diverse needs of Albertans. We acknowledge Minister Nally's pivotal role in shaping a more efficient, transparent, and consumer-friendly business environment. Minister Nally, your dedication to service excellence and red tape reduction is admirable, and we are grateful for the positive transformations you have brought to the business community. Thank you. Thank you, Shelley. Dale, I would have to say that's probably the best bio that I've heard from you. You might, want to, <laughs> you might want to keep that one. That was good. So now I'd like to invite our last speaker of the day, Dan Arndt, uh, president of ZZA Hospitality Group and local business owner of Crumble Cookies to share a few words. Hello. Um, yeah, so our group owns and operates businesses all throughout the province. We employ more than 500 people here across the province of Alberta. And I can say that the, dealing with the licenses and permits and things that it takes to operate a business is challenging. It's really challenging. Most recently, we dealt with that when we opened uh, Crumble Cookies here in St. Albert. Um, it's a stressful time. It's complicated, stressful, and it's expensive trying to get a new business open. And when you add on top of that the complications that come along with uh, permits for um, building permits, development permits, business licenses, all of those things, um, it adds a lot of expense and makes things really complicated. 
Um, we were so pleased with our recent experience here in St. Albert. Right from the get-go, economic development here in St. Albert was incredibly supportive of them uh, helping us find our location and, uh, you know, we're really supportive of our plans to, to bring 50 jobs here to the province and open Crumble Cookies. Um, and then uh, during the process, our ability to get, or the timeliness of the building permit process, the business license, all of those things really contributed us to be able to get open in a timely manner, which really saved us uh, money and allowed us to be successful and uh, again, bring these jobs to the province and uh, bring crumble cookies that we're so excited about um, here to St. Albert. So we were really thankful for that whole process and thankful to the province for this whole red tape reduction process. Anything that makes it easier for us to operate is a, is a real win for us as we uh, you know work to bring business to, and uh, jobs here to Alberta. Thanks. Uh -huh. So thanks, Dan. And uh, so this concludes the formal portion of our event today. We're now going to move into uh, questions from the media, and I'll turn the time over to uh, Nikki. Thank you very much, Grant. Um, <clears throat> may I now request our guests to have a photo op in the front, please? Thank you. We will now proceed to the media question and answer portion. We will start with the floor and then go to the phones. Um, the mic is uh, to your left here. Feel free to go to the mic if you have any questions. And please state your name and entity, please. Oh, hi. It's uh, Riley with the St. Albert Gazette. Yeah, I was just curious. You mentioned uh, that you've cut one third of red tape. I'm, I'm just wondering how that's quantified. Like how, how do we know how much red tape there is and how do we know how much has been cut? Yeah, thank you for that question. And in fact, it was, uh, it was Emily Hunter that uh, the first thing that he did uh, uh, was, was to count the, the, the entire red tape in this province. And this was when we were all excited about cutting red tape and you couldn't get going fast enough. And, and M Emily Hunter was adamant that the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to quantify it and, and count how much red tape we've cut. And the actual number of regulations that we've reduced is 200,000. And, and so uh, in addition to that, we, uh, I, I will be bringing legislation forward in the spring where we are going to put some guardrails around red tape reduction in the future because we're not just going to break our arm patting ourselves on the back and say the job is done. We're going to continue creating a culture of red tape reduction and that means actually having accountability spelled out in legislation by each minister and how they're required to report out every year in the annual report, including how much red tape they've introduced, how much they've reduced. So, yeah. Any follow-up, Riley? Anyone else on the floor? Uh, operator, can you please push through the first caller, please? Kendra Swagowski, Global Edmonton. Oh, hi. This question is for uh, Minister Nally. Uh, I wanted to ask you, can you give me a timeline on when the uh, parental rights legislation will be introduced this week? and? Uh, what kind of consultation uh, has been involved so far? Yeah, well, that's a, a question I'm going to have to refer to our Premier on this because uh, I wasn't involved in the consultations. Uh, so you'll have to speak to her about that. I can tell you it is something that she is passionate about, is not just uh, our cabinet and caucus, but um, uh, Albertans. This, this, this is something that Albertans have said to us loud and clear that they're passionate about. And, and so we're responding to that and bringing legislation forward. In terms of actual dates um, and, and, and who they consulted with, you will have to direct that to the Premier. Uh, Minister, I just wanted to follow up. Yeah, I, I wanted to follow up with one question. Uh, does the legislation mimic that uh, legislation we saw in Saskatchewan? And, and what is your personal um, stance on this? 
Well, I can't tell you at this point the exact wording of the legislation because we, I mean, we haven't even done first reading on it. Uh, so for that, I'll just have to say wait and see. And, and my personal opinion is, look, I, I have four kids. And so I absolutely value parental rights. And, and I'm also the minister that is responsible for cutting red tape. So, so I know that there are groups in Alberta that default to government knows best when it comes to your children. That is not our government and it is certainly not me. My default position is that nobody loves their kids more than the parents and parents know best. Operator, can you please put through the next caller, please? Lisa Johnson, Edmonton Journal. Go ahead, Lisa. Hi, thanks. Hi, thanks for taking my question. I'm just uh, wondering for the minister, this is a pretty specific question, but I'm wondering how much your ministry was involved with the decision made by uh, Minister McIver's ministry um, to request that all municipalities across the province provide an inventory of their agreements, their funding agreements with the federal government. We've heard from uh, Alberta municipalities that this is quite a uh, red tape uh, addition as, as opposed to a reduction. So I'm wondering if your ministry was involved in that decision and what you, what you think about that uh, generally uh, in terms of asking municipalities to do more work. Yeah, that was a decision that was made by Minister MacGyver, but let me be very clear. We, we have never taken the position that all regulation is bad. I, for one, am someone that has, uh, has, has always enjoyed clean air and clean water, and that's something that I want my, my children and my grandchildren to enjoy. So there will always be necessary regulation, but we want to have a light touch. We, what we're against is, is duplication of regulation and unnecessary regulation, not all regulation. And so Minister MacGyver uh, has made that decision that that is something necessary that, uh, that, he, that he needs to move forward with. And in terms of the, the whys, you should, you should refer those questions to him. Lisa, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, thanks for that. I'm, I'm hoping that the Deputy Mayor of St. Albert might also be able to offer her thoughts about this and just in terms of um, how the, the municipality, how the city of St. Albert um, is dealing with that specific request and if it's uh, a burdensome thing or if it's uh, something that's already been sent back to the province, um, how many people it took to fulfill that request, uh, that sort of thing. I'm just wondering if she can offer some perspective there. Yeah, the city of St. Albert has already issued a response and so if you look to that response, I think that that would be all that we could say on that. That's all I have. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, operator. Can you push through the next caller, please? There are no other questions in the queue at this time. Thank you. That concludes our media question and answer portion. Thank you for coming today. I really appreciate it.